I think that Aedes hero might actually have shifted over to the Abyssal Lane in order to fill it out, and that is a challenge in and of itself because you're playing very different heroes. We'll see if he decides, if uh, Magnority decides to go for that going into here. Draft underway, bans already looking pretty standard, uh, apart from the Prime Stark sign. They seem to be taking the leaf out of the Nova Esports book and saying, you ban the characters you don't want to be played at all, we'll take this opportunity to target ban. Right, and I think that's going towards maybe God, who is the jungler on the side of Minority, and he's shown uh, some ability to play um, varied heroes. We saw Quillen out of him, we saw Slint as well. Perhaps Pritark has done the research and know that he plays Necroth as well. Zephyrs will be the final character. So, you get rid of Richter as the one kind of uh, powerful character drops out from Pride Stark. Everything else, oh, they missed the ban. Did that? They didn't lock in the Zephyrs. Zephyrs didn't get locked in. Our first Elsu of the day. I think that was why they were going, oh, wait a moment, we didn't ban out Elsu. And, and as a result, him. <laughs> they let him through. Now this will be Pride Stark locking in the Elsu for the first time in the Valor series, yes. opposing them. There is Elsu a telling has been banned. If you didn't see the earlier games, we've had four best of twos, eight matches of Arena of Valor already today across Europe and Latin America, and Elsu has been banned in every single one. And I think that Minority took a look at the lack of Elsu and said, Nani? <laughs> Sorry, that was, a, that was a bad joke because of Nani in the top right here who has selected Alex, but oh my goodness, every single one of the major heroes is going over to Pride Stark. They pick up the Florentino as well and Annette, all three heroes that have been banned today. Don't get me wrong, Alice Telenas isn't bad, but if you oh, let... Hang on, you love Telenas. We've seen great I, work from... I Sarah. do, but here's the problem. Elsu is Telenas, but better. Elsu functions exactly the same way as Telenas, but has much larger range, needs to be punished. And so that's why the flash now comes out. The potential to dive in and shut down the Elsu is key if Minority are to come out on top. Yeah, that, the problem with that is the Annette's going to be able to push him out of there. Obviously, has We're not going to get Quillen in as well. <laughs> oh, yes, we may. <laughs> this is... No, okay, A team... no, they took Zephyrus instead. Okay, go Zephyr's for this. who Zephyr. was nearly banned out by Minority and for some reason didn't get locked in. <laughs> Zane has been a fiend on the Zephyrs throughout all these games. I think that was actually, no, he went with the Zill in his portrait, but it's going to be difficult to deal with these playmakers on the side of Pride Stark. What would you pick for Minority now? Oh, well, they haven't even, yes, they did. Just they're about. indecisive. That was, the yeah. Least. Well, they were looking at the Moran, they're like, wait, maybe we can win the late game if we go Moran, and then they realize, wait, we already have Telenos, which is basically the same archetype of hero, so I do like to work better. It will bridge them to the late game, but I'm not sure if they can deal with the side of Pride Stark. That said, this draft isn't terrible here for Minority. There were issues, but the problem is they gave up way too many overpowered heroes. KZ Fox is just trolling right now. <laughs> this is the new menu oh, screen. This one, oh, this, oh, but... He's got so many skins. He's got to make a no, choice. He's got two. Okay, well, that's a lot of options, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe he has more and he just doesn't like them and regrets buying them. But he's at the moment like, oh, but this one, uh, we could cast this bit if you really like us for the 15 seconds. Talking about the Raz pick. Right, so Raz and Elsie, Florentina and Zephyrs, luckily, they weren't meant to have that because Minority failed to lock it in. But they did get Alice, Talianus, Superman the Flash and Rourke as their picks. And we do see Aedes Hero in the Abyssal Lane, that they have fully shifted over him, shifted him over. He's on the Telenos. Okay, so not the Slayer Lane. He's going to be in the AD Lane. And that's going to be a big shift for him because he has been in the Slayer Lane for a long time, spanning seasons one and two. If this game turns around, if there is any hope for Minority, it is this Flash. And I don't feel comfortable launching an entire team's hopes on the Flash because it's not a character that's considered meta. Right. He can be very powerful in the right situation if he can get to the back line. We saw him. But, he was pretty good today. Yes. And the, if we see a similarly effective flash, it is because that flash succeeds, because that flash manages to get onto the Elsu, manages to shut down the Quillen. That is literally their only hope. Two best of twos coming at you from North America. Our first game of our first best of two has a Pride Stark with a bit of a powerful draft against Minority. Minority need to shut down the Elsu like we said. This will be the first time we've seen an Elsu in the Valor series, and I can already point out why. Exhibit A, why Elsu is constantly banned right there on your screen, folks. You can Massive shoot hack the map, Daniel. J5, I, I, you know, you said Flash was how they're going to be in this game. Uh, he has a third of his health bar, TJ. Yeah. 
And that's kind of the problem, especially during the early game when super speed isn't yet available. You need to be able to get on to the Elsu that requires knowing where the Elsu is and having the HP to shut him down without getting punished. This is just cruel. Beginnings on the support, bullying out Nani on the support with just auto attacks. Like, ha, ha, just throwing out just literal, literal support auto attacks in order to bring her down. That will out damage Netless. Although I can't <laughs> believe that's a sentence that's relevant. Macy's hero. This new world we live in. <laughs> is in trouble in the oh, bot no. lane. Oh, no. There is the snipe. It will be. Oh, a bit of a misplay oh. from Casey Fox. Pushing Ace's hero to safety. The Gust Force doesn't quite finish the kill. That's unfortunate. A couple of miss abilities there from Pride Stark, but the rotations are on point as we see. Oh Zane my take goodness. down Nani here. That was a nice snipe coming through. Maybe Gods will grab one, almost two, if Zane can stay alive. Oh. He's got to safety into the pen, and Ra's there for the cleanup. J5 races in the snipe, tags no. him low. He can't stay in this fight. And I gotta say, this isn't the pristine play that we needed to see from Flash, from J5 here. If they're gonna have, if they're gonna win this game, you said it was on the Flash, and he is not providing that excellent play that we need to see from him. No, because the Flash needs to be able to get out ahead, and he missed a wave very early on, thanks to the pressure. Flash needs to be able to target the L suit. We haven't seen him get that opportunity yet. And that was supposed to be a kill on to Zane there, able to stay alive with the Death Flurry, but Ooh. this is just, <laughs> this is just terrible. Hades Hero pressed back underneath oh. the tower. A nice double win. Oh, Cuffs, no. he's gone as Raph finds the execute. Maybe God coming in. Casey Fox, he's here alive. Determination spent. Beginnings, Casey Fox will fall back. Robois spends the disengage trying to get behind the tower. He will. Beginnings is gone, but it's worthwhile sacrifice if Ross survives, and he will. That took four members to finally take down one hero. It feels like Pride Stark Empire is just outskilling Minority at the moment. Yeah, they've definitely been able to take some good fights, but it is not over yet. Like you said, Minority get our back on the board. And if they get this Abyssal, especially, they're in control. J5 grabs KZ. That's another in their favor. Zane to dive. Can't steal the Abyssal. And I think he's overextended. If maybe Gods can stay alive. 80's heroes there for the damage. J5 gets Ra. Oh, and him. Pride Stark have lost almost everything. It is only Zane getting revenge in the pen that keeps them in the lead. <laughs> he still got it. That was amazing fighting 1v3. But over the top line, all that happened, TJ, the reason why they won that fight is because they had... They, they lost the fight up top with KO versus the Superman. But it's a tower for tower trade with the kill advantage going to minority, which means provided they stay alive down bottom, it's still in their favor. But that is a tenuous grasp as it will be KZ Bucks deleting AC Zero again, catching him out. Is this the trio lane? What is going on here? KZ Fox lives in the bot for some reason. <laughs> He is consistently there taking him out, but he misses his wave in the mid, and perhaps Price Rock Empire needs to focus on that, but Raw starting to take down this tower in the Abyssal lane. The tower is just getting chunked. I love how much damage Elsu does this early on. You can see the tower vanishing. Not quite enough, he didn't have enough wave, but still force Nani back. And taking a look at Raw's build, he looks like he's going for the snipe build early on with the flashy boots for that cooldown reduction and the Astral Spear leading into either the Rank Breaker or the Muramasa, probably the latter. So, tower game so far even. Kill leads slightly favoring Pride Stark. January. He'll turn that perhaps even further as J5 comes through. Cyclone will be deployed. Casey Fox to flicker away. January too far forward will be punished. Now Nani, maybe, and J5 are all here to try and get revenge. K.O. will get to safety, though, and Pride Stark done of a threat. K.O. says, can I have this dance, and takes him out as Elsu takes up shop in the mid lane. Tower's alive, but only technically. It'll take one person hitting it once. Beginnings will do exactly <laughs> that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Determination, it's not enough. Maybe God's in a lot of trouble. He's turned the table on KZ, but Zane's still here for the front lines. AC's hero needs to hold, and he's done so, but well within the jungle, which means Abyssal is up for grabs. This is definitely a Helter Skelter game, but Pride Stark is managing to stay ahead despite all of this craziness thus far, and they take the second Abyssal Dragon of the game. They have a bit of a tower advantage to the side, and that will help them take these fights going forward. Pride Stark now have a quite significant gold lead. How can Minority begin to work their way back? 
They need to continue to farm up 480s here on that Telenos and don't let them get pushed in by Raw. Take better fights here. Nani in trouble. Will get back as the death row above goes wide. He's going to survive. Now the flag comes through. January for big damage. There's J5. One and almost two off of one Cyclone. January's got more pressure. Scooping Zane out from the lane. The snipe will arc past and they've got more players. He's maybe got Pops the determination. Yes. He's denied by a great win cup from beginning. Uh-oh, raw. Big trouble. Oh. oh my god! He just got deleted. The hurricane ball's good though from beginnings. Isolation baby underneath the tower and Zane trades up. Beginnings just the assassin even though he's playing that support. Salvages the situation. Make sure to get revenge with the wind, excuse me, the hurricane while pushing him back into the tower. With rest retiring, is beginnings the best support in NA? Very well could be, though the side of BA Gaming might have something to say about that. Oh, I'm sure they do. <laughs> January, <laughs> but, look to drift back as KZ Fox is here for the cutoff again. Pride Stark with some good macro. Fortunately, Superman just moves so fast, it's really difficult to catch him out. Yeah, KO used the gentleman's duel on him. That is the name of his ultimate. And Superman said, no thanks. I am uh, from a different planet, not a gentleman, sorry. And with the speed of the disengage, there's no way to really fight it. We talked about that earlier with Florentino. For an ideal Florentino fight, it's, it stays in one location. Right, but once you stay in there, he's going to have a field there. Up on top, he's fighting too. Does have an opportunity. It looks like he's just disengaged, though. Superman the Flash a little bit too much for him to handle for now. Well, you talked about what they need to have happen, and apparently January provider our answer. January can do that, but ADC has to flicker away. KZ Fox now might be in trouble, though, with determination. Popped is a good flicker. Hurricane uh -oh. Wall, beginnings is overextended. Oh. He will be the sacrifice. Oh. Um, but Raw Snipe arcs in. It's an easy pick. They will get out. Nice dash out with the death flurry. KZ Fox through with KO. Grabs the tower in the meantime. It will be maybe gods for the damage. Chasing deep through the death flurry. Dodging the death from above, but not quite surviving. It's Nani instead for the kill with a sunshine. Somehow Zane, he tries to get away. He's caught in. Here is KO with the duel. Nice damage through. It will be the pick onto the support as well. Ra's range damage ensuring another team fight win the Pride Star. KO with that triple threat coming in to kill, but here comes J5 on the flush, but cannot get in here. You know what, TJ? January on a Superman has impressed me a lot. J5 on the flush, not so much. He has found quite a lot of damage currently leading his team in kills. He's been very good at chasing out isolated picks, although we haven't caught many of those fights on screen. Yeah, and he hasn't really been the carry that we want him to be, particularly when he needs to get back on that Elsu. Looking, look at the Elsu. He has two deaths to his name, but doing a lot of damage. I'd like to point out, J5 actually hasn't died yet. The only player of his team. No. And yet he seems to always be coming from base. What do you insinuate? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe uh, he's faking his out here. But uh, lots of recalling. It's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll see what the end score screen says. Hey, I'm, I'm, on, I'm solidly on his side. He's been doing a good job in the role. Because the number one thing he needs to be doing is threatening the back lines. Mm. Because if you don't, well, we've seen what happens when Raw lands a fully charged snipe. People just vanish. Well, the thing is, we keep seeing a five-man stack here from Tribe. Or excuse me, Tribe. I was looking at A's here. My mistake. It was uh, it's from Minority. And they they continue to group up, whereas Pride Star continues to split push, which allows them to get this lead. They have It's only 11 versus 8, but they have a 7,000 gold lead. Yeah. And that's a somewhat disappointing scoreline for Minority, you can see those snipes start to demonstrate the gold lead. Once Raw gets to level 15, those snipes, as long as he stays in one place for 15 seconds or five seconds, will do 100% pierce. AD's hero did just get Slick Sting alongside his Clap Sancti, though, so he's going to be doing some pretty significant damage. That allows him a lot of attack speed and higher crit chance there. No, he takes a lot of damage. J5 in with the poke. There's a hissy fit as well, but he does not for the Cyclone. Miscommunication costs them an opportunity to kill Ra. That is an opportunity that they need to take advantage of as KO comes in from the back. AD's hero, half HP, but will survive. AD's hero needs some more protection if they want to take some of these fights because he needs to be able to step up and deal that damage. So, Minority are definitely on the back foot. Are they out of it? If we see some more plays like we've seen from January, then perhaps they can get back into it. But the entire team needs to cooperate, and you need to see ma major damage coming out from AD's hero. What's missing from January's pushes? Because I agree they're very impressive. Why aren't they getting kills off of them? I think it's just the team is not there once he gets the, the good pushes into his team. They have had good team fights so far. 
and that has allowed them to get those eight kills that they have. Now, I think they need to start focusing on macro a little bit more because they're getting pushed in on all lanes. And if they can't take these little skirmishes, then then they're gonna get out split pushed by a prize dark. The enraged Abyssal Dragon up for the first time in this game. Pride Stark, maybe minority team fights have been good, but you'll be hard pressed to win one with this much of a gold deficit and the buff against you. Zero contest coming out from minority, which you know, either they were unaware or unwilling to contest there, and they're just gonna continue to fall behind. The gold score just continues to build here. Okay, fine, stun dump. Pride Stark want to be able to take this tower. Just zone in all lanes as Ra begins to work away on the high ground. January oh, will be chased no. back, but Nani gets deleted. Now Zane, oh, that might be a bit much. He doesn't have an escape. Fine, he's fine. Fine. <laughs> Two towers targeting him. It's fine. Death Rift, just get out of there. J5, Game five. what are uh -oh. you doing? Uh, I, I don't know. Cyclone is apparently. Can you get out of here? I don't, don't think so. No. Oh, Zane misses. J5 can keep running. Finally, the Death Flurry will take him out. That's a second pick given over for free, it feels. And the high ground down. Now, it can be properly threatened. AZ Zero to zone probably does have the damage necessary to clear a wave. This could be game. You're absolutely right. Three players on the defense. Ooh. And the push comes through. His AZ Zero will be deleted. Zane with the good target calling. Maybe God's gone as well. January needs to flee back behind the towers, but they did get the wave clear. They did, but they lost two heroes for it now. Pride Stark going to be pushing out on this bottom tower, which is already at one-fourth health. I don't have the death timers, but J5 should be up soon. So he can return in time with the super speed. Maybe he can save the day. Here he is coming in as January tries to clear a wave. Nani needs to be perfect as well. The wave clear is there, but the towers, the core, still under threat. Nani's gone. They don't have all the wave. Pride Stark cannot finish game, but they have every opportunity to do so. And it will be game number one over the Pride Stark Empire. That was a different game that we've seen all day. Pride Stark just getting small advantages one by one throughout and they finish them off just slightly better throughout all for all phases of that game. I feel like that was the most standard game we've seen yeah. so far, where one team eked out an advantage in the way you're supposed to, and then steadily enforced it. Right, and just won the game with no issues. Yeah, constant fights, constant sort of progress, a little bit of back and forth, not one team massively dominating throughout, but just progress across Antares and pushing it down at the end. The that, was, that, was a, that was a good matchup. You know what, when we were watching that game, it didn't seem like they were dominating team fights, but every time I looked at the gold, yeah. they were just getting higher and higher, getting more and more of a lead. And that just goes to show that they had the superior macro the entire time. If you look, that's what you've been wanting to see as well. Exactly. Isn't it? That's yeah. what you've been desperate to have. <laughs> Some good wholesome AOV. But if you looked at where the team fights were being taken, I think that tells the story. Because your minority were challenging them. There were a few that minority flat out won, but they were all happening within Minority's jungle with the exception of like two during the early game. Mm. And that's why that gold lead was building because even when Minority sort of kind of won, all they were winning was a chance to get the farm they should have been guaranteed anyway. Right, and obviously Pride Stark's gonna take an even-ish outnumbered fight. If they're yeah. saying like, okay, we have a great opportunity to take one member out, we're fighting 2v3, but that's okay because even if we lose, we're getting advantages on the other side of the map. They're losing out by overcommitting to this area of the map and that allowed them to continue to build gold leads even when they were losing fights. Yeah, and we could definitely see that as their gold lead continued to build. There was no way it fell back into the game for Minority. They were strangled out. And this is one of the bright spots for the side of Minority as they were able to take one of the members down just as a crazy... Oh, excuse me, this was a better fight for Bright Stark, barely holding on. Yeah, J5, that was one of his weaker performances. He did clean up quite a lot out of the major fights. Uh, this was Zayn giving over, it felt, a couple of kills. Pride Stark, that was their weakest moment. Right, and they gave that up. That, but that only allowed them to have the gold score tied. And that, at this point... That was literally a one-shot from Ron. <laughs> right, but look at look at Florentino by himself up top. This was a 4v5 once again. Yeah. That was a good move by January as well, getting in there, doing as much as he could, getting out just at the right time. Getting exactly. I, I feel like January was the one bright spot. You would like to differ, but I think the one bright spot. Yeah, I, I think he. Do you think the rest of the team underperformed that badly? Well, he was by far the biggest bright spot. I'll say that. I'm going to be in J5's bright, corner. Do you mean candle brightness, sun <laughs> brightness, or somewhere in between? Somewhere in between, oh, maybe okay. a very bright LED bulb or something like that. Ooh, at least fluorescent. I'm I'm in J5's corner very firmly. Uh, if you look at his 
stat line, he did a pretty good job out of the fights and in a couple ones of just cleaning up the kills, managing to threaten the back lines. And no, he couldn't turn the game, especially not after a very disappointing start to it, but he made an impact, and that's what I was hoping for from the flash. TJ, look at these stats. AD's hero, 16% damage. J5, 21% damage. That, are the, that is the second and third lowest on the team. Yeah, no, I understand exactly. This, these kind of don't add up to it because I understand what you're saying, TJ, about what you saw from him. But yet the impact he's had on the game is not what you would you would expect more out of a Flash. Yeah, right. because the Flash is burst damage focused. So he's going in, he's finding those three kills, which is a major portion of his team's damage, but all of them are roughly closing out kills. He's not going to be doing a whole bunch of sustained damage. If he was, that would be an exceptional performance. More troublesome, though, is AT's hero on Telenar should be doing exactly that. AT's hero should be hovering at the back of the fight and just sustaining down people. The fact that he's 0 for 4 yeah. as such a good player and his stat line was so abysmal says to me that Zayn had perfect target calling all game long. Yeah, it was either Zayn was on top of him the entire time or AD's hero has not performed like we wanted him to, transitioning from the DS lane to the Abyssal lane there because, like you mentioned, there's so much distraction on the team. Yeah. There's, there's there's the Superman, there's the Flash, there's the Rourke. They're all on the front line. It should be a field day for Telenos 